right, driving a Honda CRV home. This is a friend of my wife's. Uh, I believe it's a 2008 model or 2009, anyway. But anyway, she was having problems with starting, and she had a local garage come and get it this morning and they towed it to their garage and towed her it'd be about four or five days before they could fix it well that just ain't gonna fly so anyway i uh went over and picked up the car and i'm gonna see about changing the starter on this this honda all right first of all what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn it off and see if it'll start back Yep. So I can tell y'all what's going on. What's going on here is when the starter cools down, it's swelling up the brushes and stuff and it's getting in a stuck position. So it is time for a starter on this car. And uh, like I said, we're going to try the shortcut way instead of taking the intake manifold off and see just how difficult this thing can be. I have looked at some forums and they were talking about, you know, you got to take the intake manifold off and all that. So first step, putting it up on some wheel lifts so I can work on it and fit under here with a creeper. I'm pulling out these little tabs which hold your bottom shroud in. And these are a little bit different than like Chevrolet ones and ones I'm used to messing with. You have to get up underneath the little button and pop that out to release the pressure. And it should just come right out. So there we go on that. All right, we got the shroud off, laying over there against the fence, and we're gonna look up in here. Now we can see the starter. And I'm not sure if that's an OEM starter or not, um, but we're gonna take it off and get it replaced. But I started, started taking this bracket here off, and uh, that's going to have to come off in order to get to the starter bolts, but we'll get this bracket off and then we'll continue. All right, as you can see, that next step, we got that bracket out of the way and instead of pulling it out, I just, just leaned it up here so you got some electrical harnesses hooked to it. But what I wanted to show you guys is this one here. I had to basically almost take it all the way out with a ratchet. This, this is a long bolt. So that's the easy one to get to on the starter, taking it out from the bottom side. And it's hot, so should have been a little easier to come out. Usually when they're hot, they come out nice and easy. Um, we're gonna put that over there in our bolt bucket. And then see this, this sensor, let me get my hand a different way. Here we go. That's a knock sensor, okay? That knock sensors can be in the way of me getting to this back bolt, which is a doozy from what I hear. So we're gonna have to remove the plug off the sensor and possibly the knock sensor itself, which is a 27 millimeter socket. So we'll we'll see. Let me uh, see how it goes and we'll be right back. All right. Back at you. So here's where I'm at now. You can see my ratchet back behind the starter. I've got about a three inch extension on a short 6.14 millimeter. This front easy one to get to was a 17. That was easy peasy. This back one, let me tell you something. Almost just decided not even to make a video. It got so aggravating, I was like, I had to walk away for a second, but 
you can't actually get a ratchet and extension on it. But I would say this is the part where the dealership takes your intake manifold off instead of uh, dropping the starter from the bottom. So you got to have real agile hands and I would say some mechanical knowledge for sure because you're going by feel and memory. You can put your hand over the starter and if you keep pushing up in there you'll feel the nut back behind here. But it is literally impossible to get your left hand in here and your right and guide it on. You have to go by memory and keep trying to hit the head of the, uh, the bolt, the back bolt. So anyway, you can see it's loosened now. And, and another little tidbit I learned from another guy is uh, just keep on turning until it comes out. You don't want to try to get in there with your fingers or any of that junk because you're just going to scratch yourself all up and, and do nothing and have to put a socket back on it. So as hard as it was to get a socket on, I'm going to, I'm going to sock, ratchet it on out. And uh, when she's out, then we'll, we'll pull the starter down where we can disconnect some of the electrical stuff. As you can see, I've disconnected this, this piece here, but that's not like that's just a connector for some harness. But uh, then we'll, we'll kind of pull it in an angle where I can get to it and uh, get the starter out. I hope this helps. I'm about 35 minutes into it. All right, so working this starter out, you uh, basically, it's like a, a little puzzle up in here. Um, let's see, okay, now you can see. I had to twist it up and then flip it down but anyway we got her down we're going to unhook these connections here and it should be a nut right here underneath this plastic piece little protector thing here let's see there it goes yep and there's there's where our nut will be and we'll take that off so we'll unplug it take that off and then we're going to pull the starter straight out That is starter removed. So after the uh, puzzle of removing it out of there in a tight space, then uh, unhooking unhooking the, the two wires to it, I have a starter on the ground now. So next phase, go get a starter. All right, we got a new starter. It's got late on me. It's turning dark. Um, didn't start on this job till about four and it gets dark here at five. So I had to run down the road. Of course, they wanted $40 core charge. So I'm glad I took the old one off first. Um, this starter here at AutoZone costed like right at 180, 190 with tax and, um, you know, probably could have found it cheaper on Amazon or, you know, did some price matching, checking, but uh, the lady that I'm doing the job for, she needs a car and she needs it quick. So that's why I'm doing the job for. So anyway, we'll put this baby back in and reverse the uh, process we just went, went through. All right, guys, I am reversing the process on this starter, so I'm gonna give y'all a little tip here. It's a little little cheat that'll help you tremendously on uh, reinstalling. So this is very important. That back bolt, the one that's so hard to, to get out when changing the uh, starter from the bottom of the car I'm gonna show you a little trick about getting it back in because starting the bolt, which I just tried with uh, with it lined up in the back is near impossible. I, I think I probably could get it done, but it would take me a lot of time. So uh, you see where it starts back there and it, and it has like, it has like this little nipple. 
kind of like, let me see if I can get the light on it. Let's see. I don't know if y'all can see that. But it does have a nipple. I'm going to pull it out and show you guys. See that right there? That's why the boat's so long, so you can get to it from the back side of the starter. But if you start it, put it in that hole, which I had to, I had to twist. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had to twist, twist the, the starter a little bit, you know, offset it in order to, to see, see where it starts on the starter. So, and what I'm doing is I'm starting it, and I'm gonna flip it back into position go to the back one first with my socket and my short extension and see if I can get a bite. If I can get it to start, then uh, that would definitely be a, a great way to uh, reinstall it to save some time. So give me a second. Let's see, see how that goes. All right, now you can see what's going on. I've got that back bolt use my little trick starting it in the in the slot first and then I got back there with my short extension and my short 14 millimeter and I was able to get it started and I did require having two hands on it so you definitely want to have your your Honda up on some uh uh, ramps, so like some uh, car lift ramps, you know, you just drive it up on them and gives you room where I can slide under here. I'm actually feet first up underneath the front of the car to the position I need to be in. So anyway, and this is a long boat. You're going to be turning on it for a while. So you're going to be like, man, is it ever going to end or ever going to come out or it does you just got to work on it so anyway we'll get that back one tightened up and then we'll just keep reversing the process and if thing goes good i think this job could be done in about an hour an hour and 15 minutes um through the bottom you know now, if I had to take the intake off, throttle body and all that, and replace gaskets, whatever, uh, yeah, I could see that probably taking longer. So, all I've had to remove is one bracket and the bottom plastic shield. It's just being a contortion artist to uh, <laughs> get these bolts out of the starter and, and then finagle it out like a, uh, a puzzle. So I'm going to keep going at it and uh, be back with y'all in a minute. I feel it's starting to snug now. So I know I'm getting, getting somewhere. See there? Getting some torque on it. All right. I'm going to snug this one up. I'm going to hit this front one and uh, get them evenly torqued down. And, uh, and there we go. We'll have one starter installed. So awesome all right just a few minutes ago as i was tight snugging up this back and i was showing y'all you know after my little tip on getting that back bolt in um i didn't notice but i had a little gap here as it was starting to snug and what i had to do is i had to to loosen up this a little bit and pick the starter up and align it back in its proper place with it leaning like that. And I'm trying to video, I didn't notice that I was uh, starting to snug up at an angle. And this starter, it fits like in a little cup, you know. It, when you got it in the spot, it slides right in and flush, so. Just a little tip there, you don't want to tighten one up crooked, you know, and end up, you could break something possibly, or, um, you know, just have it misaligned. It wouldn't hit the flywheel when you hit the starter. But, but anyway, I, I think it's going pretty good. Everything's snugging up great now. Let me get her, get her going here, and then uh, I'm gonna put this, this uh, up here. There's a harness. I gotta 
plug back into this piece. And uh, I got an O2, uh, not O2, a uh, knock sensor I need to put back and plug it back in. And, and then uh, this bracket here, I'm gonna put it back on. And uh, like I said, I left the harness plugged to it. I'm just gonna bolt it back up. And then uh, we'll be almost done. Easy peasy. Alrighty, just installed the uh, knock sensor right there. That was a 27 millimeter big socket. So you gotta have it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. The starter's all tightened up, mounted in. And I'm gonna put my bracket back on. There you go. Back installed. Knock sensor back plugged in. It's tightened down. Torqued right. Brackets uh, back in place. One starter. Done. I'm going to put the plastic uh, shroud back on and uh, I'm finished. One last thing. When putting all the... Uh the bottom dust cover on, rain jacket, whatever you want to call it, uh, there is two 10 millimeter bolts. Once you get it clipped in place, it all just pretty much snaps in. And you push these little things in. I really don't care for the design a lot, but, and then there's your other 10 millimeter. And after that, you're done. It's time to, Test out the old Honda, see how she's starting. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see here. What we got? Looks good so far. Ah, oh, love it. Nothing like a new starter. Oh yeah. They'd only do one in a Honda like this. Have fun, guys, and be safe. <laughs>